everybody, Sponge Murphy here and welcome back to the latest painting tutorial video. In this video I will be showing you guys how I painted up the Skaven Hunter, so stay tuned and we'll see how I did it. So the model I'm going to be painting is the Skaven Hunter. Now if you're not too familiar with the model, it's an actual conversion that I did maybe about a week or two ago. But it's in my previous video, make sure to check the link in the description, it'll be in one of these corners here as well. But the skin colour I started off with was Bugman's Gloss, my usual go-to colour for skin. And then with the yellow robes underneath, I went with Averland Sunset. Now I went with this because it was the only kind of base colour yellow that I had, but I have used it before, it's tried and tested, and it works, and I kind of know how to do it in a half decent way. So then we go to the usual lead belcher that we did for the metal. This is for the gun, the sword he has the armor on his back and any other kind of smaller metal parts that you see on the model as well. Now the cloth on his back, I wanted this to be, to look like it wasn't just a cloth, I wanted it to be like some skin, some flesh that he had uh, from a previous kill or something like that. So I went to a rack skin flesh to really give it a brighter texture than the Bugman's Glow. So then I moved to rack art flesh for the helmet. Now the original, the original idea was to give him a kind of a bone colored helmet with metal horns on it and i think i honestly i think i just completely forgot about that and i went with the bone colored helmet and on the horns as well and um, so it kind of stuck like that i kind of cut onto it halfway through the model and and kind of <laughs> i kind of had to stick with it now um, and then of course the kind of trap he has on his hip was done with retributor armor that i use a lot for any kind of gold colors as well the gun stock was dry out bark and i really wanted to have that dark brown uh, but not too dark so dry art bark is kind of the nice in between for that and here we can have a look at now the model with all the base colors on it's pretty solid um, I'm kind of happy with how it goes as well. I did the wrap parts around the gun with rack art flesh as well, as well as the wrap around his wrist. Um, everything else was kind of, it's all covered in there. His fur was done with Mornfang Brown, which is just a little bit on the arms and a little bit uh, on his cheeks as well. So we move on to the shades now, which I actually started with Reikland Flesh Shade over the kind of, I'm going to call it his cape, his skin cape. Um, but that will be changed a little bit further on as we go on as well, we'll see that there as well. Um, so the usual over metal colors is null and oil. There's no reason not to really go for it. I didn't want to go for a dirty look, I just wanted to go for a dark look. So the null and oil over all the metal parts uh, was a definite first choice to pick for that as well. So then we move on to Agrax Earthshade. Now here is the kind of part that I wasn't really too happy with. I went over all the kind of bone colored parts, the record flesh parts with Agrax Earthshade and I should have done them with I should have done it with a little bit less Agrax Earthshed on it. Um, you'll see that later on, I kind of go back over a little bit to try and make it look somewhat nice. But once all the shades are on, the model is really starting to come together now. The colors are tied in, he's starting to look good. And then I'm gonna move on to the highlights to try and make the part stick out, add a little bit more detail to it as well. So he's looking good right about now. I'm kind of happy how he turned out so far. And then I think the first highlight I went to it was Bugman's Glow over the shade colored Bugman's Glow because I originally tried I think Katie and Flesh Tone it was too bright so it's so something that I'm gonna have to do a bit more researching when I'm using Bugman's Glow again I know it's my usual go to color but um, it just wasn't working out this time so I went with the Mornfang or not the Mornfang that's on this one now the, I went with the Bugman's Glow over the skin as well and um, so Mornfang Brown then was over the fur the fur on his cheeks his arms and the stock of the gun as well just leaving out any of the deep recesses now this is where I went a bit too heavy with the highlights so I started with Screaming Skull on the wraps which are kind of I'm more kind of dry brush more than anything over the wrap of the gun um, and I started on the horns and I, I started off okay the edge highlighting started off pretty good but then when I kind of started doing lines on the inside of them as you can see right here and um, I added it a little bit too much so I kind of left it for now and I come back to it later on so I went to Stormhost Silver over uh, all the higher part of the edges of the metal which is like the edges of the blade the edges of the gun and especially the blade coming down at the bottom of the gun as well which you might see here in a second as well and as well as the back armor as well to highlight all the edges of uh, the kind of the armor plates. Now pink horror, now this is a very very subtle highlight of pink horror just on the edges of the flesh cape and this is because I wanted this to look like it's like it's fresh kind of skin it's still a bit raw looking and uh, so that's when I did the pink horror highlight 
and I went over that just the edges and just kind of maybe a quarter of the bit the, of the skin flesh with cardboard crimson um, and when it dried it really looked like a different kind of shade of skin it looked really well so over the yellow then I went with Uriel yellow it's tried and tested I've done it before it looked really well and I was really happy how the edge highlight turned out on Uriel yellow and again more of these less highlights with the Uriel yellow it makes it stick out so much more so here's what I did with the horns and I came back to them and I wasn't happy with the highlights so they kind of tidied up a little bit more I went over it with Agrax Archjet again but just a very very little amount this time just to kind of hide the blaring highlights and once it was finished it worked I was happy with it and um, I went over uh, the ogre jaw again and as you can see the ogre jaw has a gold tooth in it as well so i really wanted to get that gold tooth a little bit more darker as well and in the end it, it did hide it did hide some of the the glaring highlights that i had on it and it looked pretty well so i'm really happy how it turned out and then the base was a mechanica standard gray on it with an agrax or shed wash over and then a highlight or not a highlight but a dry brush of Dawnstone to highlight the edges. It's what I usually do for the kind of the gray edges and it looks really good. So I'm happy with how this model turned out. It was a conversion that I wanted to start with and it turned out looking really good. The paint job in the end, once I, hide, once I kind of started hiding some of the highlights, he looked really good. But overall, I'm really happy how he turned out. If you guys like this video, make sure to let me know in the comment section below. If you like the paint job, make sure to let me know on what you guys think about it. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one.